now that we've seen the very basics of making a custom GPT, let's actually explore uh, the ways that most people go about at least starting a new custom GPT. When we click on create, by default, instead of taking us to this configuration panel where we can manually write instructions, it starts off on the create panel. And what we actually have on the left is a separate GPT called GPT Builder. This is a chat interface where we can say things like, make me a code tutoring GPT, or make me a uh, GPT that helps me plan a trip, or something like that. And it will actually ask questions and interactively configure this very custom GPT that we're working with. It will generate images if we want it to, come up with a name, all these different things that we can see here. So what we have to do is just come up with some ideas. So why don't we do something very simple to start? How about a GPT that uh, helps explain blocks of code? And it doesn't matter if you're not technical, let's just say that's what I want it to do. In fact, if you're not technical, that actually might be more helpful to have a custom GPT that can explain code. So what I'm gonna do is say, make a coding GPT that explains programming concepts and code to non-technical people. And I'll hit enter. You can see it's, it's saying it's updating the GPT. It's basically generating instructions and then we'll be configuring this GPT with those instructions. And it usually will ask some follow-up questions. How about we name it, name it code companion? I'll say sure. Next, it generates me a initial profile picture. Now I can change this at any time. I can do a custom profile picture. I don't have to use the one it generates for me. I could also just tell it, can you try generating something else more, you know, less cartoonish or more colorful, but for simplicity's sake and the sake of time, I'll say, that's good. And you can see it's updating in the preview over here. Um, I'm actually getting that image. I'm getting the name, code companion. And most importantly, if I go to the configure panel, we can see the name has been filled out. The description has been filled out and the instructions, the most important part has been filled out. So I won't read this whole thing, but you can see it generated text, right? I didn't have to type this myself. The GBT is designed to bridge the gap between technical programming concepts and non-technical individuals. It aims to demystify code and explain programming principles in a way that is easy to understand without assuming prior knowledge. The GPT, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's enough, right? But it comes up with some decent instructions, at least as a starting point. Though in my experience, you'll definitely want to modify these as you test your custom GPT. If you get results that are too long or too technical or the tone is wrong, right? Or you're unhappy with whatever the output is, you can update the instructions to be more specific and push the custom GPT in the direction you want through updated instructions. It also generates a couple of conversation starters, more than a couple, four in this case. Conversation starters are these things over here. We'll talk a little bit more about them, but essentially they're just preset messages that users can click on to get a conversation started, hence the term conversation starter. Okay, so let's just play around with this first over on the right side and make sure we're happy with it. We can try clicking one of these conversation starters like how do databases store information? And it's giving me a pretty good overview that is non-technical, right? For the average non-coding human, it uses an analogy about libraries, organizing books, and you know, it, it looks pretty good. Maybe I think this response is just too long Right, so I could go back and update my configuration and tell it, please limit your responses to under X amount of characters or even just a more generic version, try and be brief. We don't wanna overwhelm someone who is non-technical with a huge response. Okay, let's just try another example. What does this mean in JavaScript? And I'll just give it a line of code like const color equals purple. And see how it does explaining that. Looks like there, oh, there is a typo. I mismatched my quotes. <laughs> and okay, this is fine. It's breaking it down and explaining it. Again, it doesn't matter at all if you're not a coder. The point is that I'm using this GPT builder to help me build the custom GPT instead of typing these instructions myself. Let's just completely change things up and say, actually, let's make this 
a, um, I don't know, a resume feedback GPT. And it's as easy as that to get it to change the instructions and the configuration details for my custom GPT. It takes a moment, but it will be updating the configuration, right? It's still called Code Companion. We can change that name ourselves. How about just Resume Companion? <laughs> we could change the image if we want to. I can upload a photo. I can use Dolly. I can ask GPT Builder to generate me a new image. We'll learn more about that later, but it's very straightforward. Nothing very exciting there. But now the instructions are completely different, right? This GPT is specialized in providing feedback on resumes. Okay. So that's the basic idea of using the create panel on the left. It allows us to just kind of give the builder, the GPT builder, a set of instructions, an idea, just a sentence, and then it will run with it and write the configuration details at least as a starting point that we can then improve or modify, right? As we test and iterate on the right side with our preview.